What's up guys, Devil Dog Gamer here. Today we're going to be talking about Tarkov Arena again because my initial impression of it was actually wrong. It's not awesome, it's actually pretty bad. After the initial glee of like, hey, we get a new game we've been waiting for, getting through Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, which can be fun, finally we started getting to Tier 4, 5, 6, and higher, and seeing the glaring problems with the game. And they became more apparent the higher you got, the higher rating you got, the more you played, the more apparent these things started to appear. And I will definitely say, I was pretty confident that Battlestate wouldn't have any problems with Tarkov Arena. We know they have very good experience with these types of games. From Contract Wars, their work on Hired Ops, they really have been doing these kind of shooters for a very, very long time. Way before Escape from Tarkov was ever a thing. So some of these issues that I've seen were really like... What are they thinking? Like, what are, were they even trying to do? And some of it is pretty downright, like, what the hell? So we're going to kind of go through some of these issues and talk about what they do to the gameplay and why they were even a thing in the first place. So one of the biggest issues with Tarkov Arena right now is the matchmaking. And this is what we're going to talk about as, and we're going to kind of break it down a little bit. So you have your presets. You know, you have your tier one your tier two, three, four, well, that's technically four, five, and so on. And you grind them. Each one has a symbol over here. This is like the gear score, which if you would think about it as like War Thunder battle rating, like an M4 Sherman, if you line up and join a match with an M4 Sherman, you'll never fight a Abrams unless you actually force yourself to do that. This is kind of like what it's supposed to do. If I join with Werewolf, there's no freaking way I should be fighting people as guard right? You would think. No, not a chance. It goes off of your ARP score right here because the only, the only game mode right now is ranked. So you're, you're going off your actual character's rank, which is your ARP score. I'm a rank mercenary 2000 and there's a bunch of different ranks in there. And that's how they match you is these arena ranks. But the problem is the way it looks like they have the game set up is that when you play ranked, you should be playing these kits. So if I join, I'm a, I'm a Jackal D+, plus, I sh and I joined rank, I should only get to choose from these kits here, which are very well balanced, it seems. Or if I'm mercenary, I should join with these kits. Very well balanced. But that's not the case. That's absolutely not the case. So as mainly a solo player during the day, when I queue during the day, and you know, solo players, people don't use their mics and stuff, I might have a bit of a losing streak. I might lose like three in a row, win two in a row. What I see happening, and I see it pretty consistently, as in this clip, you'll even see, I'm with a bunch of tier ones with a tier five kit for some reason. And we're playing a bunch of tier four and fives, but they're all in tier one kits. So obviously I'm gonna lose the match. Say you're in tier one and two kits, or even tier three kits, you've had a nice little spree where you've been wiping the floor. Suddenly, you're facing a team who's maybe gotten manhandled a little bit, but they're all wearing four or five, six, or six tier six gear. At tier three, I actually ended up fighting a tier six team at one point. It's all over the place with balance in the matchmaking because the way it's supposed to work is you're only supposed to, in the ranking, you know, in the, in the ranked gameplay, you're only supposed to play those ranked kits. And unranked, it looks like it's supposed to run off of gear score. But then again, to even use the gear score, you have to pick your kit before you even go and start the round. So it almost seems like this system that they have right now is based off of how it's supposed to work on unranked, but they don't have the systems implemented to actually make it work. It's a really huge issue. And even because of that, you know, I'm on the assault class right now. If I want to change class, because right now I'd love to do CQB or, or scout class, if I jump down to tier one and start playing those classes again, I'm going to be going against guys because of my ARP rank, my arena rating. I'm going to be fighting guys that have tier three, four, five, sometimes six. So I'm basically locked into this tree now that I can't leave. If I drop down into a tier, I'm absolutely going to get manhandled the entire way and get no XP and the grind is going to be absolutely insane. This implementation seems like, I don't know how it passed the ETS server, I don't know how it passed QA. It doesn't make any sense, and the fact that they've had enough 
experience with like matchmaking in these types of shooters, the fact that this is even how their system works is extremely weird to me. Like, I don't understand it. And you're basically screwed if you don't like your class. You're like, oh, well, I guess I'm kind of just stuck with it now. And it's not even fair because say I have solo queue a few bad matches, I can get down to tier three or four with my kit and just stomp the floor with people. Or, you know, say I have a few good matches and then I can get jumped back up into even higher tiers. And a lot of the guys are that have been no lifing this are basically having no one to play with and sitting in really long queues because they have high level kits, a really high level matchmaking, and they're stuck playing the same people every single match because that's the only people that they're matched against. And this also comes into play when you have some of the kit balancing. Some of these kits are absolutely unbalanced. Um, they did do a quick hot fix on a lot of the first ones that were kind of really unbalanced. But then like, you know, at tier four or even tier three, sometimes I'm fighting guys that have no recoil PB-19s with PBP ammo that can pen all of my armor and just demolish me instantly because I'm shooting to the moon on full auto, but they're just literal laser beams. It doesn't make a lot of sense with some of these kits. Some of the kits of the Altlands here in the guys that are higher level, they become unkillable because everyone has no armor piercing ammo, basically flesh damage ammo, and they can't do headshots because the guys were in the Altland. It seems really unbalanced for how much work they've actually put into this. And then, of course, we start running into the sound issues of Tarkov, which we all know that the sound has always been such an issue with Escape from Tarkov. When it first came out in Alpha, they kind of fine-tuned it to where it was a really good point, and then people kind of started complaining about certain things with the verticality, and then things went downhill quick, and they still just have never sorted it out. With Arena, it gets kind of crazy because you know with the occlusion and the culling zones and stuff it becomes hard to understand where people are and one of the weirdest things about this is in the spectator camera say i'm spectating someone like operator drewski or airwing who i've been playing with a lot i can hear so much better the footsteps around them that i can give them call outs to where guys are and that we do this all the time in the discord calls everybody else does this too we're on discord so we can give call outs I can hear these guys clearly around him, like, hey, he's reloading at your 11 o'clock. He's walking, he's coming around to your six now, and they can't hear a thing. And there's been so many times where I've said, like, hey, there's a guy, like, bandaging to your one o'clock low, and they've been like, I can't hear that guy. But they jump over, and sure, shit, he's right there bandaging at one o'clock. It makes no sense how the spectator sound is so much better than the in-game sound. And I'm, I'm assuming that's because of the culling zones and the things that they don't have in the spectator camera that are in the actual game session that, that come from Escape from Tarkov. It just seems weird to me that the sound is that good in spectator camera, but in game it's absolutely shit. Like half the time I can't even hear anybody walking up on me, but then I go to spectator camera watching my teammates play and I'm like dude there's like five guys coming up on your left and they can't hear a thing and they get killed and I can see it coming a mile away because the sound is perfect in spectator but in game it's not and that's what drives me nuts here we are like almost 10 years of escape from Tarkov and we still haven't gotten the sound sorted out and suddenly we're shocked that Tarkov Arena doesn't work that well I you know it's it's one of those things I gave them the benefit for the of the doubt but at this point I'm like I'm starting to see like really how like out of the depth they are with with this game and just what they're doing i don't know what they're doing half the time like how how did this matchmaking thing make sense to them how did the kit balancing make sense how does the sound work better on spectator than escape from targov and when you're playing in arena i don't understand it overall i like the premise of targov arena it's a great practice ground for if you want to get into Escape from Tarkov, but you want to get better at the PvP because, you know, you focus so much on quests, you may not get a lot of the gunfights like a lot of people do, and then suddenly you find yourself being outgunned or outplayed. This is a great way to learn how to do the PvP in Tarkov, so that way, you know, when you get into Escape from Tarkov, you're not at a disadvantage. I like the idea of it, but the execution has been so poor. And once you get past, and a lot of people are going to like, oh, tier one, two, three, or, or fun. Once you get past tier three, it starts to become apparent like how bad this actually is. And the fact that this was rolled out like this, there's really no rhyme or reason for the matchmaking that makes sense. Some of the kits don't make sense and the sound being so bad. I really don't see how this is going to be popular in a few months unless they start really patching it 
and fixing it now. Like, we're not, we know tar we know battle state's really bad with updates. We get like one or two major updates a year. That's it. Star Citizen updates more than, ba than Tarkov. So I don't see how they're going to keep this alive if they don't get on it quick enough. Um, because it's already starting to die out. I've seen so many of my friends are like, yeah, this is probably my last night. A lot of content creators are getting burned out by it because it is that bad. So I don't see how they're going to keep doing it. But I like the premise. The execution's pretty poor. But, you know, we'll see what Battle State does with it. But I want to know down in the comments below, what do you guys think of Tarkov Arena? If you're enjoying it past Tier 3, 4, 5, 6, or you, it just got miserable for you, what do you think about the matchmaking, the sound? Let me know what you think about Tarkov Arena down below. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.